join the bloody league. The bloody league is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call of council. Council Member Halsey? Here. Council Member Tate? Here. Council Member Tate? Here. Council Member Putnam? Here. Council Member Steiger? Here. And Council Member Walker? Here. Are there any additions to or subtractions from the agenda? I would like to add the item K. PMC 20.72.50 on the top of the paragraph 8. Say that again. Sorry. Motorhome, et cetera, parking. Sorry. Motorhome, et cetera, parking. Yes. Has that yes. gone back to the governance committee? It seems like we keep talking about it. It, it went back to the governance committee. Was it ready to talk about this time? I think we're ready to talk about it. Do we have documentation? Well, we can have a discussion and we'll go from there. Or you guys do whatever you want not to. Well, it'd be nice to see something. Can we get copies before we get there? Might be able to get copies.
that with the changes, and it seemed like Councilmember Walker was pretty pleased with the changes. There is some flexibility in the contract, but there wasn't before. Technically, we're out of contract right now because the last one should have expired as of 12:31. So uh, we're bringing this to move it forward to uh, send it back. You know, hopefully, council move it forward and approve this so we can send it back to Auburn. And, and uh, I've been told by Ron Tiedem and their director that he thinks there should be any problems on their side. We've already run by them. So, any questions that you've read through? Yeah, I just caught one thing. I don't know if it's, a, if it's a typo. So under Exhibit B, I know we talked about this originally. Um, the second line item, and this is on page, page 20 of the agreement. Um, networking, desktop repair, and maintenance that require on-site support is included, although we pay them to drive out here for the on-site support, which totally makes sense. Um, the one thing I think is missing, and I think it was in that row originally, so it probably got deleted, was the hourly rate that we pay for emergency type things or for things that are out of contract. And my guess is it's probably the $150 an hour? That's what I was thinking too. Or the 190 which is right above it. I think it's probably the 100 and actually it's is it the one that well, one is business hours yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. It moved down. My bad. Okay. Never mind. We did. <laughs> Yeah, I think we had uh, some fairly good discussion during the technology meetings, and Councilor uh, Walker did some good uh, review. And I just want to think, uh, as far as the technology, maybe we're in line with it. So, and they will be providing us um, details when they submit invoices. They'll be providing all the calls and the tickets that we submit. So, I know questions, at least in my mind, came up for what are we actually getting for this? Three thousand dollars a month. We're actually getting a pretty substantial amount of calls. Uh, we have calls or tickets or whatever, so we're we're using it as a budget. So. Any other guys? Any other discussion or questions from the council? Once the council, the council will. Okay. Um, I'd like us to to, to consider hiring uh, a private consulting company outside of the city of Auburn for future contracts. Maybe looking to it for next year, at least get a comparison. Yeah, it was one of the things that we did bring up in the technology, <coughs> that signing this contract puts us back in line with their services right now. We're, getting, we're involved with the web coming on. And, and uh, But yeah, we've all discussed it. Lots of looking at the probability of trying to get outside other than Auburn, you know. Even if it's looking at possibly hiring our own tech right yeah, we the contract allows us to think it's a 90 day cancellation. Uh, yeah, I read that. I was just and the we talked about the committee. You know, maybe we want to keep them on for certain functions. So like spillman and some of the, the, the law enforcement stuff that the city can deal with, um, and then basic IT type services and outsourcing. So we talked about maybe still the contract back and stuff. So we can we can start the contract. Okay. We'll, yeah, we'll do a, a comparative study um, for before next year's budget comes up so we can look at that as an option. Okay. Any other questions? Questions? Let's count this budget. Move forward. Thank you. Bring up the Valley Regional Fire Authority for lease of city facilities. We've got Councilman Walker and John Hawkins and see him here tonight. Yeah, John asked me to present. Um, the, the agreement in here, this is something that was included uh, in the plan originally, uh, but it's co kind of always been an unspoken agreement um, with the fire authority. So, kind of what the practice has been is just kind of solidified in the agreement. Um, and it, it basically boils down, because all the stuff here, so you can read through it, but um, the fire authority will lease the fire station from the city for $1 per year. Um, <coughs> which is consistent with the other stations in the other, um, in Auburn, because that wouldn't even have a station. Um, for the areas used within the building as a fire station, um, they will accept responsibility um, for maintenance, maintenance of those areas as well. In fact, I think they've already replaced, correct if I'm wrong, they've already replaced one of the big roll-up doors at a pretty substantial cost. Um, and then they've agreed to split utilities 50-50. Um, and then they've also, um, they agree to split other maintenance type costs 50-50 with the city as well. So if there's 
structural damage to the roof, um, you know, with prior notice and getting estimates and that kind of stuff, uh, they'll split the cost with us as well. So, but the rest is, the rest is in the contract. And if there's any questions, there's a board meeting tomorrow night that you can get back there. But the board voted on this. Up to this point, we've been working with our agreement. Yeah, and they've been, um, except for the parts where the city forgets to build them for utilities, they've been, when they, when they get a bill from us, they pay it. <laughs> they um, they, they're getting a bill pretty consistently at this point, so, which is a good thing. Uh, and they've paid, you know, they've paid for maintenance, they've bought, you know, uh, if they did some plumbing work here, they've done it at other stations. So plumbing work they've done, and, like, new appliances, uh, the roll-up door, so they've, you know, they've been paying for things. They pay for uh, on the workout from downstairs. On the workout from downstairs. Yeah, they took the cabinetry and the same stuff out and put the TV in there. Um, they pay for the landscaping, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's been an agreement. A lot of this is part of the plan originally. It's just a matter of actually making a formal agreement. Any uh, discussion on the council? This council's pleasure. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. AB 14 059 resolution 2014 136 authorizing the execution of agreement with Carol Morris, uh, Morris Law, the Land Use Services. 10.
you know where we didn't hire anybody. I mean, I just mentioned that, but went out there just to kind of get a feel, and we had three responses off of that one. So I don't know why we're not getting responses, and it was just maybe a suggestion to council that you could try doing the old one and, and see if we get response from that. It's, it's up to you guys how you want to handle that. Do we send out the, the current one and you put some work into it and just modify the conversation piece? I think that would be no problem. I, I don't know if that's the problem, though. I, I'm just guessing that maybe they don't want to work on a flat rate. I don't know. So I think I could see that would be a hindrance. Well, I was going to say, what you talked about, the NBC has some contacts that maybe we send that out to them, ask them for consideration as well as feedback. What they, if they don't, aren't interested, what is it about it? I don't that think that have? would be a problem to <coughs> you. Because that would give us an, an insight of yeah. Because I don't know what the issue, issue is. Instead of us making a modification up front and throwing it back out there and see, you know, throwing it on the wall and see what sticks. I'm totally on board with that. If we're getting those kind of comments as far as the flat rate, is Tampa okay with us putting the other RFP out there with the, the hourly rate? Why don't we bring it back in and discuss it? Okay. Discuss that when we have some feedback. So, when we reach out to them. Okay. We'll just put them. Yeah. Okay, so we, we kind of slide back past the, what we were discussing about. So well. anyway, so that was one of my thoughts. I don't know if council has any other thoughts as far as the ten thousand dollar cap, and uh, which would be fifty dollars. I'm fine with it right now. Yeah, I mean, if we need more than that, we can that horse back. does come back. So that way we have control over the first drink a little bit. True, but most of our conversations have been via phone. She made one visit. <laughs> Back up again, uh, rate increase for waste management. Yeah, this doesn't require any council action. Um, it's just an FYI that uh, the waste management got an increase from the county, so they're moving it on to the to the customers. More of a pass through. I wouldn't sign it without council being aware. I would sign it. Just give a letter of understanding. So no, there's no action required on this one. <coughs> okay. And, um, Ken, you're back up again. Twenty fourteen. Dash 137, setting a public hearing regarding revisions to the municipal code 20.72.050F concerning impervious parking. So, um, one of we found, I should say, one of our council members found in our code that we do not allow pervious parking in the city, and since we uh, encourage that kind of thing um, because it's better for the stormwater. We thought it would be a good idea to, and also we're having a design done for City Hall parking lot with a pervious surface. We thought it would be a good idea to change the code. Any council discussion? This is just setting the hearing. This is just setting the hearing, yeah. What's council pleasure? It's like what, April 28th? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, 14 well, 2014-138, Gordon Possession and Use Agreement. It's actually the purchase and sale document for the right-of-way that we're purchasing for the Stewart Road project. We have to have the purchase and sale agreement in order to get a possession and use agreement from them. So it looks like a... Yeah. Looks like we've got a uh, 1.3 reduced <coughs> cost and half. Half, yeah. And um, that money's coming out of the TIB. TIB money, yes. Yeah. Council questions? Yes. Once 
this is signed, the TIB has already said they'll free up the money. So we have 75,000 city match. We're budgeted. We're budgeted, yes. We're budgeted with from that at the beginning of the project with that. Yeah, we're it was always budgeted for it. We didn't actually have the money, so right. we have the money. Okay. So, any discussion? Mr. Council Pleasant. Resolution 2014-139, surplus of bail, flail, flail, flail. 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 It sounds like it doesn't blow up. Lower <laughs> deck. Okay. We already replaced the flail mower, but we still have the old flail mower, and it's we don't want to use it anymore. It's way past its usefulness, um, and we had to re we had to replace one of the mower decks, uh, another mower deck. And John Deere Washington Tractor said that they would be more than happy to take the flail mower on trade for five hundred dollars. Um, and if we surplus it, we wouldn't get we'd probably get scrap price out of it. So, so they will take it on trade. That was part of the negotiations when we purchased the other mower deck. Any other discussion, Council? Mr. Pleasure. Council member, I mean, council vacancy, Mayor Geyer. And so I wanted to bring this forward to council. Um, as you know, council member Bolsey said it's that he was stepping down as of May 1st. And I just wanted to have a discussion of the post position to have it posted by Friday. The vacancy for the council seat will give us two weeks through the 25th to accept applications for the council vacancy. You can include those in your packet on, on the 25th. You'd have the weekend to review and you would invite those that came to the, um, that those who apply to come to the meeting on the 28th and hopefully council will have the opportunity you know, to interview each of them for the session and hopefully um, make a decision that you can vote on it. Can we do this without a vacancy on the council? Without an actual vacancy? I know you can tell me to step down, but can the council start the process if there's a person that leaves? My understanding is you can. So that if there is a vacancy, where is that? If you're lying, you got me questioned. I just say, where is that? Because that person won't be sworn in. You know, and also, because um, when I talked to Judge Rashawn or Kelly about Judge Rashawn, he would be able to be here that following Monday at that little shop to swear in the new council member. So they wouldn't really be taking that seat until they were sworn in. Because of the recall, we we had to wait till they certified. Well, we certified, but we didn't take office until we didn't start the process until. And that was by choice after the certification. That was council's choice. For fairness and openness. I will get that confirmed, but um, I don't think there's an issue because we're not really giving them the food, we're just filling a yeah. vacancy. You know that there's going to be an opening. Right. So because my house is going to go on hand basket. Since I quit smoking again, I can't, get my, I can't get my blood pressure down uh, within normal limits or even close. So. I will confirm that before we post it on Friday. If we just still can kind of go through that process, I just wanted to talk with council to make sure we're okay. I didn't want to just do it without talking to council. Now, technically, reading this, is we, he would have to be the seat would have to be vacated. Before we can make the seal appointment. I mean, if you read it, when one position is vacant, the remaining members of the governing body shall appoint. So if his last day <coughs> was May 1st, then we'd have to wait until he was vacant from that position. And then we could appoint afterwards. We could still look at you know, the candidates yeah. knowing yeah. that he's going to leave. But I'm just, that's just that's what technicality I read. So we might want to talk to AWC or somebody. Sure, or MSRC yeah, to yeah. get a clarification yeah. on, on that. Um, 
Which is fine. I mean, if you even wanted to have a special meeting on the first. I guess this kind of goes and coincides on the other piece of this as far as the council retreat following is we're trying to get that set up for May 3rd. Um, we've spoken with AWC. There's a, uh, a training that they have requested that we take and they could be available on that day as well. So I wanted to get a consensus from council too if people will be available that Saturday from I think we said 9 to 2. We meet right here at City Hall, provide lunch have a training from AWC and then the retreat would be, and so I was hoping to include the new person, you know, to kind of start fresh. Um, and so it's kind of why I was looking at those timelines as well. I mean, because we don't have to have somebody in place at our workshop, we don't vote anyway. Well, we just need to make sure that uh, Right, no, and I, I'll double check that, but that was kind of where I was thinking along those lines. So the new person would take office on <coughs> Not until, well, probably the seventh. He's sworn in at the following council meeting. On the fifth, fifth. Or the fifth, I'm sorry. At the workshop. At the workshop. <coughs> the judge would come in, swear that new person in, and then it was you know, the seat of the diet. When do we, we can't appoint until the position's vacant. The soonest we can appoint would be the fall. Right. If, we, if that's how it actually reads, then we couldn't do anything until after the first. And well, then we, even post the position, if that's how right. they interpret it. Well, but even if, well, even if we posted the applicants and screen people, we can't take formal action until a council meeting. And the soonest council meeting that we would be able to take action on will be the 12th of May. Correct. So we couldn't swear anyone in until.